entire nine years of this NDP Liberal government, the only thing that's dropped in price has been the price of hydromorphone, which, by the way, the street price has gone from $20 a pill to $2 a pill under their watch because of the diversion they have allowed. Police sounded the alarm, sharing that 50 percent of hydromorphone that they've seized has been from diverted taxpayer-funded drug trafficking schemes, flooding the streets with potent drugs and fueling new addiction. So the question is simple. When will they put an end to this dangerous program? The Honourable Minister for Mental Health and Addictions. Mr. Speaker, I will say it again. Diversion is illegal in this country. And not only that, Mr. Speaker, Conservatives are trying to portray that the fiction of our streets rather than the reality. The RCMP made it explicitly clear of what is happening with regards to diversion, and the numbers you are quoting are simply not fact. The facts are this. Data shows that there is no increase of hydromorphone in the past decade from drug seizures across Canada. Mr. Speaker, we are talking about saving lives. Where are they? The Honourable Member for Charlebourg, au Saint Charles. We have learned in the Journal de Montréal that there are people using drugs in the streets near an elementary school in the St. Henri district of Montreal. That's Parents crazy. Have, are having to step over people using drugs on the street and are traumatized and worried for their children. This situation is ex escalating across Canada. Can the Prime Minister confirm that he will not listen that he will not listen to the demands of the City of Montreal to legalize the use of hard drugs in public spaces? The Honourable Minister. Yet again, the Conservatives want to play games with the lives of people who need health care. Decrim it's, it's, it's shameful, Mr. Speaker. Decriminalization is about personal possession. It has nothing to do with the control of substances in this country. Mr. Speaker, on the side of the House, people need prevention. They need harm reduction, which they refuse to acknowledge. They need health care. Stop criminalizing our loved ones and get them into health services. The Honourable Member for Pontiac. Mr. Speaker, develop agencies in Quebec are very important in Quebec, and they contribute to growth, productivity, and innovation of our Quebec businesses. And that is why I'm somewhat uh, upset with my Conservative colleagues from New Brunswick. They're saying that these agencies uh, hamper local economies. Can the Minister of Economic Development reassure Canadians and tell us how our government is going to continue to invest in, in Quebec's economic growth. The Honourable Minister responsible for economic development, I'd like to thank my colleague for her question. I'm very concerned to know that Conservatives in Quebec are telling their colleagues from N New Brunswick that they want to get rid of these regional development agencies. For every dollar invested, it's four dollars investment that is generated. We think we have to invest in economic growth, in job creation, but they just don't want to cut, Mr. Speaker. Provincial Conservatives are terrified by their austerity plans. Thornhill. After nine years of this Liberal NDP government, their catch and release policies have gotten so bad that they are allowing criminal organizations to operate freely in the streets. Even after a seven-month investigation involving 26 arrests and $33 million of stolen vehicles, at least 14 people are already out on bail. Wow. The police work for months wow. to catch these criminals, and days later, a broken system left lets them free. When will they finally do the right thing and keep career criminals in jail so that Canadians can keep their cars? Like the Honourable Minister of Justice and Attorney General. Start by saluting the impressive work of the Peel Police Force for cracking an organized criminal ring that is taking people's cars. But the second thing I want to underscore for that member and her entire caucus is that you can't selectively listen to law enforcement. Exactly. What law enforcement tells me and the Minister of Public Safety all the time is that the days of teenage joyrides are over. This is an international organized criminal effort. You need to deal with that and follow the money path. How are we doing that? Anti-money laundering offenses, beefing up our strength on money laundering through the fall economic statement and the budget. Two things they are voting against. The Honourable Member from Thornhill. 
Speaker, it's that minister's policy that is working against That's the right. Peel police. And this is coming from a guy that his, in his ministry had three cars stolen in wow. three years. Wow. The evidence is right on his doorstep. The Liberal catch and release policies are not working. After nine years of this NDP Liberal Prime Minister, the GTA doesn't stand for, grand, for, uh, for Greater Toronto Area. It stands for Grand Theft Auto. Wow. 40 cars stolen a day in Toronto, 20 in Peel. How many more is it going to take for him to do something about it? I like that. The GTA doesn't stand for the Greater Toronto Area. It stands for Grand Theft Auto. The Honourable Minister of so Justice true. and Attorney General. In the last three months, we've held an auto theft summit. We've invested $170 million in addressing this issue through investments in law enforcement, through investments in CBSA scanners, through investing in information sharing through Interpol. What we're doing is working diligently to break up criminal networks. We're not pursuing failed policies like the Conservatives' approach year after year under Stephen Harper, most of which were struck down by the Supreme Court of Canada. The Honourable Member from Oxford. Speaker, after nine years of this Liberal NDP government's soft on crime policies, extortions have more than tripled in Canada. They allow criminals to terrorize our communities and our businesses because when they get arrested, they let out on bail the same day. The Liberals talk a very big game Crazy. about fighting crime, but when it matters, they're missing from action. Our common sense Conservative bill would have put these criminals behind bars by strengthening our extortion laws. Why do these Liberals vote against Bill 381 to fight extortion? The Honourable Minister of Justice and Attorney General. Mr. Speaker, on this side of the House, we're listening to people that are affected by extortion. We know this is a pressing problem in parts of BC and in parts of my region in Ontario. What we are underscoring is that extortion is against the law. Extortion with the... I'm going to ask the Honourable Member from uh, Peace River, Northern Rockies, uh, and I'm forgetting one of the two words on the, to please, uh, uh, please to keep his uh, comments uh, to himself. I'll also ask the Honourable Member from uh, Cypress Hills, Grasslands, please to keep his comments until he has the floor. I'm going to ask the Honourable Minister to start again and start from the top. Mr. Speaker, we are at listening constantly to communities that are being affected by extortion, particularly South Asians in the BC region and in the GTA. And what we hear from them is that they need support. We are providing those supports through aggressive responses under the criminal code. Extortion is against the law. Extortion with a weapon attracts a very significant penalty under Canadian criminal law. What, they also, what we also understand from them is that organized criminality, including foreign interference and in organized criminality, is behind these extortion attempts. That's why bills like C-70 will make an important difference, so will the budget measures on money laundering and cracking down or an organized crime. Man. The Honourable Member from Winnipeg South Centre. Mr. Speaker, with an energy grid that is 97% clean, a strong manufacturing and agricultural sector, and a diverse population, Manitoba is a key economic driver for Canada. Here, here. In order to help realize our potential, we rely on the strengths of Prairie Can, our regional development agency. Some members of the opposition have suggested that investments in prairies can are not worthwhile. Can the Minister of Prairie Economic Development please inform us of the important role that the agency plays in supporting the prairie region? Thank you. Good question. The Honourable Minister. Speaker, no matter where I go in the prairies, the great work done by Prairies Can is greatly appreciated. Prairies Can created or, or maintained over 150,000 jobs in over 6,300 businesses. Whether it's better positioning hydrogen in Edmonton, supporting work done by the Saskatchewan Research Council in Saskatoon, or helping new flyers build net zero buses in Winnipeg, Prairies Can is making necessary investments in prairie businesses to help grow our economy. If Conservatives understood this important work, they wouldn't be calling to abolish it. Mr. Speaker, it's simply shameful. The Honourable Member from Vancouver East. Successive Liberal and Conservative governments have heavily relied on migrant workers to support Canada's economy. They are often underpaid and racialized. They can easily fall through the cracks, leaving them undocumented through no fault of their own. They live here and contribute to our communities, and they pay their taxes. Yet without permanent status, they are often subject to exploitation and abuse. The Liberals say they want to regularize them since 2021, but empty words won't protect workers. Will the Prime Minister implement a broad, uncapped program to regularize undocumented workers so that their basic human rights are protected? Yes. 
The Honourable Minister for Immigration, Refugees and... Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I, I appreciate and respect the member's passion in this matter, particularly for a set of people that indeed are in Canada, are subject to abuse at times, and there should be regular pathways for people that are here irregularly. I can confirm to this House that pursuant to the Minister's mandate letter, we are looking at a number of options. I would say to all Canadians that there is no clear consensus as to the path forward. But as this is work that is ongoing, I cannot comment any, comment any further. Thank you. The Honourable Member from Timmins, James Bay. Fire season is on us, and yet oil production of the tar sands has reached its highest peak ever. That's thanks to this Liberal government's $34 billion to the TMX pipeline. Now we learn Big Oil is planning a 400-kilometer pipeline along the Athabasca River, and they want to be exempt from a federal environmental assessment. And this government has signed a non-disclosure agreement with Pathways Alliance to keep details of this project secret. The planet is on fire. Why is the Environment Minister continuing to act like a sock puppet for big oil CEOs. The Honourable Minister you, you of the Environment and Climate Change. Mr. Speaker, I've been very clear. There will be no pa special pathway for the Pathways Project. Uh, if that project is subject to Federal Impact Assessment Act, it will be evaluated as other federal uh, projects are evaluated, and there will be no special cases made for, for that project, Mr. Speaker. 